Keep your heads up and your arms covered, beautiful family in Jesus Christ. Here's the verse of the day. And it's Colossians 1.14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And we're followers of Jesus Christ. You know, the one that died for our sin, the one true living God, who we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So that makes me want to do what he says even more. All glory to you, Father. And he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And he said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? And then he said, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So any of you brothers and sisters that need to ask themselves if they're being patient and keeping his word, now is that time. And this is not a salvation issue. If you truly believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin and rose again, you'll be saved from hell. And not only will you have the free gift of eternal life, you'll have the free gift of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you and produces righteousness through you. So you'll want to do what Jesus Christ said. And a lot of brothers and sisters, including watchmen and watchwomen, are not focusing on this eclipse and Israel being attacked and Israel blowing people away and the child coming out of the woman still. And they're spending a lot of time looking at next year's eclipse. And I'll prove to you right now that he wants us looking at right now. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And I think you need to hear it again, some of you. Habakkuk 2, 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And I've been being patient because he told me to wait. He was going to show me something gigantinormous, and he did. And I could have put out this video yesterday and said the devil comet is headed toward earth and probably got more views than I've ever got. But Jesus Christ told me, no, this is 12P Ponds Brooks. I've already done videos about this because back in July on the 20th, it exploded the first time and grew horns, they said. And they said it looked like the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. And now the internet's saying that it's the devil comet. So the point is, this comet will not even be seen until next year, around April. So there's no reason to waste time on it right now. It's a distraction, family. We should all be focused on right now, this next eclipse on the 28th. And I'll show you why. Matthew 24, 29. And I've said it over and over because it's the truth. We are living in tribulation right now. Remember Jesus Christ, the truth? John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And watchmen for years have been saying that, including myself, have been saying, as soon as you see Israel attacked, we're going home. Because it's the truth. And I'm feeling his Holy Spirit. All glory to you, Father. Now back to Matthew 24, 29. If any of you think that you're not in tribulation before the seven years of tribulation happens, wake up. You are in tribulation right now. You were born into it. And Jesus Christ said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. 
And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's the rapture. And when will that be? When he's revealed? Not the second coming, but when he's revealed? When people are eating and drinking and getting married, planting and building, and getting married. Well, that will not be happening at the end of the seven years. I guarantee it. And if you think it will, you better start studying the word. Because the second half of the seven year tribulation will be the worst times ever in history since there's been a nation. Again, people will be eating and drinking and buying and selling and planting and building and getting married when Jesus Christ is revealed. And you can only be revealed once. This is the rapture. And most of you know this. And what he showed me is about to hit you like a ton of bricks. Acts 2.17 And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. That's what's happening right now. And remember, Nathan, Nathan had this vision, and our brother Steve right here just put out this video about it. And in his vision, God showed him that when Israel goes to war, it will only last a couple weeks. Acts 2.20, just like Jesus Christ said, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. When he's revealed, it's not the second coming. And anyone that knows Jesus Christ, by now you know that he's perfect. He never makes mistakes. He never lies. He does not have dyslexia. He's perfect. And his timing's perfect. And the vision is for a appointed time. And he said, first, the sun shall be darkened. And then second, he said, and the moon shall not give her light. Well, on October 14th, we just passed it. The sun was darkened. I watched it with my own eyes. And I was outside and watched it get dark. And on the 28th, there's a partial blood moon eclipse and the moon will be darkened. And it will not happen again until 2026. It's right here at seasky.org, October 14th. Annular solar eclipse. October 28th, partial lunar eclipse. Well, here's what's gigantinormous and has to give you hope and has to grab your attention. Because when you go to 2024, to the next blood moon eclipse that I've been telling you, all glory to our Father, for four years, that there's three blood moon eclipses on Purim in 2024, 2025, and 2026 that look like they are marking the tribulation, the first three and a half years. And Jesus Christ designed those to happen on Purim for three years in a row. The very holiday, their second biggest holiday that they celebrate because Esther saved them from annihilation, all glory to our Father. And if it wasn't for that, they wouldn't even be here. Well, next year, 2024, as you can see right there, the moon is darkened first. And then April 8th, what everyone's talking about, which I've been saying it looks like it marks the tribulation for years, comes second and again, Matthew 24, 29, Jesus Christ does not lie. He's perfect. He does not have dyslexia. He would not say it backwards. You can see right there. The moon is darkened first and then the sun next year. This month, 
The sun was already darkened, and next week the moon shall be darkened, just like he said. While Israel is at war, and the child is still coming out of the woman, while the woman is travailing in birth pains, crying out to be delivered from this war. You cannot deny this. Wake up. When you scroll down to September 18th, 2024, you can see it happens again. The moon is darkened first. Then the sun is darkened on October 2nd. Next year does not line up with what Jesus Christ said at all. Let that sink in. And now I'll take you to 2025. The fifth eclipse after this one next week is again on Purim, March 14th. And it's a total lunar eclipse. And a fortnight later is a partial solar eclipse. It's backwards. It's flip-flop from what Jesus Christ said would happen when he comes. He said the sun will be darkened and then the moon shall not give her light. Jesus Christ is perfect. He don't make mistakes. He doesn't say things backwards. And again, September 7th in 2025, the moon is darkened first. And then the sun is darkened on September 21st in 2025. Keep your hope alive. Jesus Christ said, when these things come to pass, and you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, lift your head up. Your redemption draweth near, nigh, and he does not lie. And a thousand years to God is like one day. But he knows to us, a thousand years is like a thousand years. One day is like one day. And when he says your redemption draweth near, ask yourself, does three years from now seem like near? Or when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, would near be just a couple weeks, two or three weeks? Sounds more realistic to me. He knows how we think. He knows our hearts. And near to us is right away, immediately, like he's been telling me this whole time. When that child comes out of the woman, that he's coming immediately. Israel's last war, it lasted six days. The war before that, Yom Kippur, 50 years ago, 19 days. This war started on October 7th, and the eclipse is October 28th. That's 21 days. Put it together, family. Do not lose hope. Do not be distracted. Do not be sidetracked to next year. Keep your heads up right now like Jesus Christ said. In almost every video, I get comments saying, Why are you yelling at me? Why are you screaming? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I'm passionate for Jesus Christ. I love him. And some of you are not paying attention and falling asleep in this last hour. Just like the apostles. He told them to stay awake for one hour and they couldn't. The virgins slumbered and slept. So I'm here to wake you up. All glory to our Father. In the name above every name, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach. And he's coming to get us immediately. Expect him. Israel is at war, family. And they're calling it Operation Iron Swords. And the next phase is Operation Samson. The nuclear strategy whereby Israel would launch a massive nuclear retaliatory strike if the state itself is being overturned. And that will lead to them saying peace and safety and sudden destruction and the rapture. And I'm getting emails and messages from, I guess, brothers and sisters saying, have you abandoned your ministry because you're sad because your wife escaped? Or they say died. And I'm laughing. I don't get sad. I refuse to be sad. Why be sad? We have eternal life. I'm going to be with Christina forever. Do I look sad in this last video? 
I don't think so. I look like I'm celebrating because I was and I am. I praise Jesus Christ every day that she escaped and that I got the time that I got to spend with her. And I've said it over and over. The only thing that can stop me is Jesus Christ. I will never abandon my post. But I work for Jesus Christ, not for people. I am not on people's schedule. I do what he says. And if he says, be patient and wait, then that's what I do. And I got the Holy Spirit all over me. All glory to you, Father. Woo, let's go. We're on his clock. We're on his timing and it's perfect. And if he says, go into your chambers until the indignation passes, that's what I do. If he says, be patient and don't just put a video out about anything, that's what I do. And then bam, he shows me that the next eight eclipses are backwards. And the moon is darkened first and then the sun, the opposite of what he said. And he's perfect. Like I said, he does not have dyslexia. I make mistakes and sometimes I mix things up, but Jesus Christ never does and he never will. For eternity, life's a vapor, but heaven is forever, praise God. The one true living God, only Jesus Christ. And all glory to our Father, I got 48 backpacks packed with supplies and food and tents stuffed in the truck right now. I'm about our Father's business. I'm not a people pleaser. I'm not a respecter of persons. I try to treat everyone exactly the same. All glory to our Father. Because it's truly just Him, His Holy Spirit living inside of me, being righteous through me. I love Him so much that I just want to follow Him and do what He said. And if He says, don't do a video, guess what? I'm not doing a video. If He says, wait for it, guess what? I'm waiting for it. When he tells me to wait and be patient that he's going to give me something gigantinormous to share with you, then I wait and I be patient. And bam, he comes through every time. Remember how this started with the child? He told me to wait one week. So I waited one week. And at the end of the week, I asked him, so what are you going to show me? It's been a week, Jesus. And he told me, to look up child. This time, he told me, do not put a video out about this devil comet. To wait. And he would give me something to share with you. And now you know, the next eight eclipses after this one are flip-flopped. Backwards. The opposite of his word. The truth. And doubt is the opposite of faith. And will he find faith on earth when he comes? Well, all glory to our Father, He will in me because all of my faith is in Him and Him alone, not myself or anyone else. And just so you know, I am not the rock. You cannot stand on me. Jesus Christ, He's the rock. And all of you brothers and sisters that are standing on the rock and your trust is in Him and your faith is in Him, you're right where you should be. Praise God for you. I love you. And I'm here to remind you to be patient. And I'm here to remind you to keep your heads lifted up. Your redemption draweth near. And you want to do that now, not next year. You want to do it daily. He does not want me to lead anyone astray. And make people think they have till next year. And they have more time. He wants us to shine bright right now and prepare the path for the coming of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And again, he said, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth near. He didn't say to do it next year. So we're hoping he comes and gets us right now. Right after the moon shall not give her light. Right before the most evil day of the year they call Halloween. 
I'm hoping that he comes and gets us and cancels Halloween. The day that people get their kids addicted to something for the first time. That gives them a candy high. And regardless when he comes and gets us, you can cancel Halloween right now. And not dress your kids up. And not take part in this satanic ritual. And now I'll show you another reason why this watch is so gigantinormous. And it's right here. The partial lunar eclipse of 2023, October 28th. And when you zoom in, you can see that the ecliptic conjunction starts at 2025 universal time. And you can see when you go to Strong's Greek, 2025 is to spread on, to anoint. In Strong's Hebrew, the definition is altar. And the altar is for sacrifices. And Jesus Christ was the final sacrifice for our sins. But it gets beyond gigantinormous. Because as you can see right underneath that, the greatest eclipse time, the time that this eclipse peaks, is at 2015. And when you go to Strong's 2015, the definition is appearance. Like when Jesus Christ is revealed at his appearance, and the usage is appearing, manifestation, glorious display. And when you scroll down to word studies, it says literally an epiphany. Well, epiphany day is the manifestation of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. And right under that, it emphasizes the fitting impact Christ's visible appearance will have on the entire world. I.E., all who will see it, saved and unsaved. And right under that, in the Greek lexicon, it says an appearing, an appearance. And I highlighted in the New Testament, the advent of Christ, not only that which has already taken place and by which his presence and power appear in the saving light he has shed upon mankind, but also that illustrious return from heaven to earth hereafter to occur. Titus 2.13, family, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The breaking forth. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. In other words, we're going home. Now let me remind you, 2015 is the eclipse peak time. And this is the definition, appearance. And when you scroll down to the English men's concordance, there's six occurrences. And they're all his appearing. And the last two are 2 Timothy 4, 8. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And the last one is Titus 2, 13. And again, this next eclipse peaks at 2015. And in Strong's, it means appearing. And Israel is at war right now. That should be enough signs for everyone. We don't even need any more signs. We know he's coming immediately. But he had me do this video to comfort you, to encourage you. There's some of you out there that are still on the ropes. There's some of you out there that are falling asleep at the last hour. So he'll give you some more. All glory to you, Father. And you can see right here, more CMEs are coming. A pair of CMEs might graze Earth's magnetic field on October 21st. And as you can see right there, there's only three sunspots showing right now. And in the next few days, sunspot 3468 will be directly earth facing 3468 strong's hebrew 3468 is deliverance rescue salvation primarily physical rescue by god and the child has almost came past the woman's feet the child is almost out of the woman right next to comet lemon which means protection Right next to the comet water 
Watchmen. And I'll zoom in. So you could see that the child is getting ready to come out of the woman. And when you go through the days, you could see it passes the first foot on the 23rd and possibly the second foot. But by the 24th, it has definitely passed the second foot. Star 10-9 and star 10-7. And there's so much more here. But you don't even need to see any more signs. Like I said, when you see Israel attacked, you know we're going home. Be patient. Have confidence in Jesus Christ. And lift your heads up like he said. Your redemption draweth near. And in case you missed it, there's a comment right next to the sun, right now. And it's called 321. Like 321, blast off, caught up. And when you go to Strong's 321, the definition is to lead up, bring up, to depart. And as the child is getting ready to come out of the woman, and the woman Israel is travailing with child and pain to be delivered, when you go through the days, you could see 321, right after the child is out of the woman, goes back up. And I'll go through the days real fast for you so you could see what it looks like. There it is. 321 is caught up. In all glory to our Father, in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. Remember, I showed you this video on October 8th, the day after Israel was attacked. Abraham received the covenant on an eclipse. Will the Antichrist confirm the covenant on the eclipse? And Abraham was 75 years old. And from the time that God created man, it was 2,023 years when he confirmed the covenant with Abraham. And now we're in the year 2023 on our calendar, and Israel's 75. Remember, it was Genesis 15, verse 17 and 18. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Verse 18, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. And all glory to our father, for our brother Ronnie, he showed him this connection between the flood and a eclipse and our departure. And it's Amos 8, verse 8 and 9. Shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up holy as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And let's not forget the most important one, Matthew 27, 45, when Jesus Christ was crucified for our sin. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And the point is, we need to follow the word, what Jesus Christ said. And when you see these things come to pass, lift your heads up. Your redemption draweth near. So we should all be focused on Israel and this next eclipse that's next week. And I'll show you one last sign and one last connection. When the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. And it's the constellation they call Fornax. And it means furnace. Its name means the furnace. Just like Genesis 15, 17. And when you go to Stellarium, it's right there, Fornax. And when you zoom in, it's a smoking furnace. And when you zoom out, and you go to the eclipse on the 28th, right during the eclipse, you can see the sun on the top and the moon on the bottom and the furnace right in between those two pieces. 
And when you go to the eclipse after this one next year that I've been telling you all glory to our father that there's three blood moons in a row in 2024, 2025, and 2026, you can see that Fornax, the furnace, is not in between those two pieces, the moon and the sun. It's off to the right right there. And I showed you the next eight eclipses after this one are backwards. The moon is darkened first. And then the sun is darkened. And Jesus Christ said, in order, the sun will be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Well, this is the last time that we're going to see that scenario. It doesn't happen again until 2026. So do what he said and lift your head up and keep it up. Your redemption draweth near. All faith, no fear. I'll see you in the air.